Okay, so I've already kind of described, you know, phishing and, and what that means, and, and mainly from a credential perspective, right? Like stealing someone's password, tricking them, you know, through a poison portal into getting that password. And if you haven't seen that video, please do check it out. Um, this is actually a different version. Like, what if I could actually tape, you know, the user's mouth, toss them in the back of a van, and and right, just move on with them? Like, I know that's terrible, but what if I could steal the actual essence of the identity? And basically what I'm talking about here is these these things called tokens. And what they are is they're representations of a human to prove to other sources that they, they're functional. And so it's the best type of phishing. And so I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who was actually working through his own proof of concept of this. And I went, uh, when I wanted to go ahead and bring him on uh, to demonstrate a very easy attack. I say that with a little bit of a grain of salt. It's a lot harder set up. But a similar type of attack as I showed you before. Uh, Matt, if you'll go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Matt. My name is Matt Bosick. Uh, I'm uh, happy to be here and uh, learning on the same journey of white hat hacking and protecting ourselves uh, for future endeavors. Yeah, man, I appreciate you being on. And uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and show you what it looks like from the attacker and the setup perspective. And then we'll kick back over just like the last video and show you what our, our victim sees. So we, we've cut off a lot of the edges here in the setup. And actually, we're going to do a video here later of the full setup just so you can kind of see it if you'd like to. Um, but right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and launch uh, Evil Jinx. Uh, e, V, I'm not the best, uh, G, tab, enter. And you'll notice that we've kind of already got this set up. So um, we're going to go ahead and attack with the link we're going to generate here in just a second. So what I want to illustrate now is what the victim sees. Um, and, and I want you to note that we've turned on MFA, right? We've actually turned on MFA. We have to use the Microsoft Authenticator app. The user is going to be presented a normal and even more normal seeming experience, right? In the sense that now they also have MFA. Like how legitimizing is this? And so we're going to hit enter on our stuff. If you notice, we have a solid SSL. We're happy. We've got a lock. Right? Like we ultimately have a lock. We're good. The user is presented with everything that looks right. So we're going to type in our information. Right? And we're going to put in our handy dandy password. And then as a user, we're going to be presented with a traditional login. Uh, and it's going to say, wait a minute. You have to approve this sign-in. So you're like, no, okay, I got to save my stupid app. Damn security people making me use this stupid app and show my face and all this wonderful things. Now, can I just get on with my business and doing my stuff? You're going to notice a couple of interesting things. If you look up at the top, you'll actually see that I'm sessioning through that address, which means that all the work I'm doing in Office as a user um, is actually being piped through the threat actor meaning that they're able to not only just harvest my tokens, they're able to not only just do those things, but they can actually start harvesting things from your session, right? And as you notice here, we, we, we have, you know, a connection. We have a token. Those green signs are everything we need, right? That means we have everything, as I've said before. So I just want to point out that the MFA doesn't stop this either. Um, and it does let us go ahead and as the threat actor enumerate, what do we have here, right? We can start poking around and say, oh, let's go session six, right? And okay, there's our token, but we can start enumerating sessions six and all kinds of other stuff with that. We can start harvesting that token. We could choose to set up other things to receive that data as it's being proxied through. Like at the end of the day, this is a really insidious man in the middle attack that allows the threat actor to get a lot more than what they would get with just a password. Um, Matt, do you have any parting thoughts for our viewers on this, uh, small to mid-sized businesses, as to why uh, you know they really need to educate their people or, 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 or set better settings? Well, I think it's a best misconception that people have that, hey, I have MFA, I'm completely secure, I don't have to yeah. worry. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into uh, the security of it, and this just goes to show that MFA is not the true king and that there's a lot of other security factors that we have to put in place. Number yeah. one is the human interface. Were you able to do that against our network? I was not because uh, U2F uh, security tokens are not uh, captured by this <laughs> uh, attack. You, you know, while I still have you, I, I actually kind of want to record a little ad blib about why um, U2F tokens also are awesome, right? 
So when we talk about MFA and it being after you type the password, the nice thing about U2F is that when you sign in in that mechanism, it literally cannot capture a password, right? Even in what we've discussed here, see that random password there that we're showing? That password could be used against us even if the token wasn't captured. So the point is, is that in, in the events where a threat actor gets a password, they can still go do other attacks, even if they failed on the token grab. But with this case, with U2F, we never type a password. There's nothing to grab in a, in a web frame and steal, right? You're going to get just this long cryptographic response that's only valuable one time. And so I just want to point out that when we say MFA is in everything, it's the type of those multiple factors and how we use and apply the... Thank you for watching this video on, you know, token harvesting uh, with evil jinx. But ultimately, the intention is to try to show your users that it takes awareness, it takes training, it takes the understanding of what's happening. But ultimately, as a threat actor, I'm going to get them to click. I'm going to have new systems and ways to do it. And what I hope is that you have set, you know, intentional policies where you think about things and say, hey, I, I, I should probably set no session, you know, persistence and I should probably set that the uh, token lifetime is X and, and understand what that risk is and adjust based on risk, right? And adjust based on different people's risk. So thank you so much for watching. Please click subscribe. Um, please click like and, and, and click the bell so that you have any new videos come up if this has been helpful at all. Uh, also, please comment if I can make these better. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Be safe and secure.